Welcome to another edition of Swim Easy Speed. Today we're going to be looking at um, pro triathlete. Actually, he's making his pro debut here at Ironman Texas, uh, Lars Schmidt. And uh, Lars has been swimming with the team a little bit over a week now. And, um, you know, just in the prep for Ironman Texas, came a little bit early. And, uh, yeah, so he came out and got in the endless pool, and we uh, decided to see if we could help him out with the stroke a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll let the clips play, and you guys can just take a look at it, and um, then we'll start talking about it. Okay, so here we go. And, you know, you can see, you know, Lars got pretty good body position on the water. Um, you know, his feet are down just a little bit. Hips are pretty good. Um, head's not too high. Um, you know, so it's not bad body position. Um, you know, and then if we go down and we look at uh, kind of underwater... So here we are underwater. You know, he's looking forward maybe just a little bit too much. I'd kind of prefer it maybe like there, maybe just about like that. But that would help kind of get everything more over the stroke. Um, so you can see there that arm goes up like that, so that elbow drops. You know, so he's kind of pressing down. He does a pretty good job, especially on that right side, of getting more on top of the stroke and getting that catch set a little bit quicker. But he does come from a swim background, and uh, but he was in the military for a while. There was a break, and he's in his early mid thirties now, and um, just getting been racing triathlon. Decided to go pro. Um, he's about, I think, from what he told me, kind of mid fifties um, for an Ironman swim. Um, and I think in the pool when he started with the team, he was, I want to say one o six, one o seven, probably. Um, we were doing some stuff early on. That's about where he settled in at. Um, so you can see hip position looks pretty good. You know, the the legs are down a little bit. You know, some of that is from that press down at the front. You know, we always want to think of ourselves as that teeter-totter in the water. And so, you know, if we're pressing down in the front, that's going to put a little pressure on the head and the shoulders to go up and then the hips and the feet to sink. Um, you know, so we'd like to see kind of this up just a little bit more. Some of this is the endless pool with the current kind of coming over and pushing everything down. Some of it is not enough connection back up to the core and then potentially not enough kind of core engagement or core strength on the water. All right. So here we go from the top. You can see right here, you know, these feet come apart right here and it's for this, you know, you can see that kind of. Um, that movement right there. And then you see kind of in general this kind of like half moon kind of shape right here in his body. You know, that's just all kind of movement where, um, number one, we really want that just ridiculously straight line running right down the middle of your body. And that means that your body is really engaged, holding all of that pressure that you're putting on it, that you're trying to generate that forward momentum. Um, and that, that's one of the first things we want to think about. You know, this is just for him, it's, it's stuff that he hasn't really probably thought about in a while, um, and focused more on the training instead of the training and the technique. Um, you know, the other thing, part of what's causing those hips to come apart. So you can see right here, you know, typically we like that kind of angle of the shoulder off the water to be somewhere between about, you know, 30 and 40 degrees. You can see, you know, it's he's at 80. So that's definitely going to impact 
kind of then the angle of the shoulder on the water down there. And keep on going. You know, the left is a little bit better. So we're right there for the left. So there's the plane, and there's your shoulder. You know, so 58, we'll call it 55. Um, you know, that's not bad. Um, I, I, I tend to give, you know, the 30 to 40 degrees is usually kind of the ideal distance swimmer. So it's an, it's a swimmer with, you know, a lot of thoracic mobility, a lot of scapular mobility. Um, I, my general impression is that if we can get a triathlete to be around 40 to 50, you know, we're doing okay. And you can see a little bit of that crossing over in the front here you know he enters with you know kind of thumb first some of that is it's probably not enough pressure on the hand down here on the left you know he's not finishing enough down there um and it's it's impacting the right a little bit you know probably not finishing it not grabbing enough water not generating enough propulsion on that left side um so you can see that right there. Then we go underwater. You know, he's doing pretty good. You can see a little bit of that handshake in the on that left. We'll slow it down. And that's just kind of dumping a little bit of pressure. Um, let's see on the right. We'll get a better shot on the right. But remember, what we're going for is as much length as we can get on the water. You know, and he's got that. He's a tall guy. He's about six foot four. Um, so, you know, he's going to get that distance per stroke if he can get really long on the water and get his core to engage. And, you know, he grew up training as a swimmer. So it's just a matter of kind of reminding his brain and body um, how he used to do it. And that's why we started out with kind of the kick with the brick and the short fins, where we just put a lot of pressure on the core not only from having to lift up the brick from the core, but then using kind of short fins to kick and really kick kind of fast. That just forces that core engagement where your brain and body don't have any other choice but to do the movement that we want it to do. Um, and then that can, you know, um, stimulate, trigger a lot of really kind of positive things after we take it away. And it impacts your swimming too and body position on the water. Um, like you'll see on kind of this next, uh, the next, um, kind of two, uh, clips. So you can see, you know, feet have come up on the water, um, hips are up on the water, and then we'll see the next one, kind of the overhead. Um, you really see how much, um, it's changed kind of the overhead position. So you can see how much longer he is and just kind of really driving everything forward. The feet are a lot closer together. He doesn't have that kind of half moon shape in his body anymore. Um, and that's all from just getting that core engagement. You know, we worked on a couple other things and tried to cue him on um, a little bit more of a high elbow catch at the front of the stroke and how to get that. And, uh, yeah, we had some success with that too. Um, he was able to apply it actually in the next couple of practices and was down to about, 102, 103s, um, kind of comfortably holding. He had to think about what he was doing a lot more, but, you know, he definitely noticed a difference and saw a pre pretty big improvement. So, um, yeah, that's my analysis for Lars. And, uh, you know, we're going to be cheering for him uh, on uh, the race course on uh, Saturday, so tomorrow. So uh, looking forward to it. As always, thank you for tuning in, and um, we will uh, hopefully uh, see you at the next analysis.